We've built a robot that can explore an environment and build its own cognitive map of that environment, which it can then use to get around from place to place. We've implemented this robot as an intelligent robotic wheelchair. We've modeled its spatial knowledge after the spatial knowledge of a human being. And we use what we call a spatial semantic hierarchy representation that includes both geometrical and topological knowledge. Our goal is to learn about people's environments and then navigate around them in what we call campus scale environments. The environments are both indoor and outdoor. Where there are multiple buildings, they're linked by paths, sidewalks, roads. One of the characteristic of these environments is that you can't count on GPS to tell you where you are. So the robot has to be learning the map and keeping itself localized and oriented by using its own perceptual abilities. So that's been a major focus of our work. My involvement with the wheelchair project is both on the engineering side as well as the research side. So from an engineering perspective, we need to get this 300-pound wheelchair robot moving around the environment safely, even though people are moving around it. So we have to establish you know, careful communication and timing between the system and the sensors and the planning modules. And the robot needs to know where it is the entire time in order to actually move safely and get where it needs to go. My uh, work is theoretically uh, based on uh, what's called model predictive control and it's actually following a principle that every human driver should follow. So it identifies how the environment looks like, uh, where potential hazards are, and it tries to predict what's gonna happen in the near future, uh, maybe for a few seconds. And it decides, given current situation, what is the best action to take at the moment, and execute that action and repeat. And it replans those sequence five times a second. At every second, it evaluates on average 4,000 possible trajectories and select the best one. We have provided two distinct ways for directing the robot. In one, the human specifies a destination, says, take me to the front door of the building. We assume that the robot has enough knowledge of the building to know where the front door is, and to know how the structure of the building is connected so that it can get there. There's another way that a person might feel comfortable commanding the robot, where the instructions are of the form, go to the next decision point and turn right. The human is expected to understand the structure. The robot has the responsibility and the authority to travel along path segments to get from one decision point to the next and, and is then told how to make that decision point at the next place. If you really want to change someone's life in, in a positive way, the easiest thing you can do is give them mobility where they couldn't before. You know, we, we take advantage of being able to walk. We don't even think about it. We get up, we go get a drink, we go to the bathroom, we go get a cup of coffee. But for some people, that takes all of their thought process. Everything they can do is just to move around. So if the wheelchair can assist that, then they can, one, gain their independence, but two, get a much richer experience of life. Doing robotics in general, it's just exciting. You can actually see the result of your research right away. So you write some code, you run it, your robots are either going to hit the wall or avoid people nicely. Uh, it all depends on your theory uh, and how you implemented that. I have always been interested in how the mind works. Knowledge of space, objects, actions. That's a kind of common sense knowledge. By trying to understand how that knowledge is structured and how it can be learned by the agent's own experience, has always struck me as being one of the great scientific problems.